we, we've just concluded five days at the ICC annual conference in Dublin. A lot of the conversations this week have been around code of conduct and building a culture of respect in the game. Mm. Can you tell us what decisions were made in, in respect of both of those, please? Mm. So we tried to deal with this issue from two angles. First of all, the code of conduct, which is applicable to player behavior and uh, squad members behavior on the field. And the board has sanctioned uh, a couple of new offenses um, uh, and increased penalties, in particular now for ball tampering, uh, or we call it changing the condition of the ball, uh, contrary to the rules. Um, they've increased the level of sanction from a level two to a level three offence, which means that a player can, if found guilty, uh, be uh, suspended for up to uh, six test matches or 12 ODIs, depending on the order in which they come. Um, so a significant increase in the level of, of penalty for that particular offence. The other main offence uh, which has been introduced is one for personal abuse. So uh, recognizing that there is often banter on a cricket field, it's, it's a long game and you, you can't be stony, play the game in stony silence, but anything that um, involves personal abuse of somebody, uh, again, can uh, invoke a level three penalty, which is uh, lengthy bans from the game. And what about the culture of respect that you, you're very keen on uh, bringing back to the game? Tell us a bit about mm. that. So apart from the on-field trying to deter players from poor play, uh, behaviour, um, the Chief Executives Committee had a very good discussion of trying to create a culture of respect amongst the member boards and, of course, their respective teams. So when you are hosting a, a touring team, make sure that you provide them with uh, facilities, enable them to prepare for matches, the equivalent of at least the same standard that the home team will get. So engender a spirit of request, uh, respect. Don't treat them uh, like the enemy. Treat them as honoured guests in your country. So a range of, of, of measures, I think, that will help encourage a culture of respect amongst teams, which will then filter down to the teams and, I think, uh, ensure that the players themselves are respecting each other on the field of play. Okay. And what about Zimbabwe? Their, their financial problems are well documented. There's now a plan of action to, to support them? Mm. So I think the, the, the Zimbabwe cricket have done a lot of work in, in trying to, uh, with, the, with the aid of the Zimbabwe government, government resolve their financial difficulties. So uh, a plan has been reached in that regard. Um, and having sorted out their liabilities, um, we can now work with Zimbabwe. The board has decided let's, we, need to, we need to get, we've seen what great cricket potential Zimbabwe cricket still has at the recent qualifier tremendous support for the for the games and there's there's a, a cricket culture that we don't want to to lose um, and with that in mind now now that the financial difficulties have been sorted out arrangements are in place uh, we will then work with Zimbabwe cricket making sure that we can review their their governance structures their playing structures and their their staffing structures to make sure that they are a body that can can uh, effectively run cricket in Zimbabwe so with hopefully with our help um, we will bring them, get them back on track and they can become uh, and reach the kind of uh, status that they enjoyed a couple of years back. And just finally, the working party that's been set up to look at the sanctioning of uh, domestic events and player release had their first meeting mm. this week. What's the purpose of that group? What are they trying to achieve? Well, with the advent of, of T20 and, and the number of uh, what we call referred to as domestic T20 leagues and events springing up all over the place, not only in full member countries, um, but also in, in many of our associate member countries, uh, there's a danger that unless we control things, um, uh, international cricket itself might be damaged. So the committee is, is really charged with putting in place a framework that will enable us to protect the the value of international cricket, the primacy of international cricket, whilst also recognising the importance that domestic T20 leagues play in promoting the game of cricket, attracting new fans. Um, in a way that, so the domestic leagues complement rather than compromise international cricket. So with, with that in mind, we need to make sure that we do the scheduling well. Um, we need to make sure that we Im uh, implement some regulations which uh, ensure that the leagues take place in conditions which promote player welfare, 
Im implement minimum standards around corruption, doping, all those kinds of things so that the integrity of cricket is not damaged. And then the third aspect of it is making sure that uh, the, the money generated or the revenues generated from these leagues, uh, at least a portion of it is going back into grassroots development of the game. So those are the aspects that we're trying to solve. Um, the working group has uh, had some fruitful meetings and hopefully by October we'll have a set of draft regulations that we can put to the board uh, for their consideration.